Because Moog captured Mikola. That's the reason. That's why America shattered the Elden Ring. It doesn't have anything to do with Godwin. It doesn't have anything to do with the freeing herself from the clutches of the Elden Beast. Because she is the Elden Beast. And if you're interested in my explanation and evidence for this, then stick around. Quote, I've always agreed with William Faulkner. He said that the human heart in conflict with itself is the only thing worth writing about. I've always taken that as my guiding principle, and the rest is just set dressing. George R.R. Martin. One thing I think we need to remind ourselves of is who exactly wrote this story. George R.R. Martin claims himself that writing about the human condition is the only thing worth writing about. Also, Miyazaki studied both psychology and sociology in college. I would assume because he too is interested in the human heart and what occurs to someone who has been stricken by tragedy. I mean, just look at their previous works. Now, if we combine George R. R. Martin's human story with Miyazaki's dark fantasy world, what we get is Elden Ring. Now, of course, the story is, as George R. R. Martin would say, quote unquote, dressed up with gods and dragons, sorcery and more. But at the end of the day, the main story is simply about the human condition, the human heart in conflict with itself. Perhaps that simple idea is enough to illuminate the confusion surrounding all the different split identities within the lands between individuals who are in an internal conflict with themselves, none more so than the god of the world, America. To begin, we must first travel back to the beginning of this internal conflict, this internal civil war, her home, the shaman village, and the horrors that occurred there. For there to be this internal struggle, this fragmentation of the self, there must be a catalyst, an event that caused the split in the first place. The game gives us plenty of examples of such catalysts and what occurs to the person it is affecting. Vike in the death of his maiden, Edgar in the death of his daughter, Renala in her heartbreak. The examples go on and on of what occurs to the human in the face of trauma. The catalyst may be different, but the result is always the same, a fragmentation of the self, a splitting of one thing into several, often darker versions. The same thing happens to Merica, with the catalyst being what happened to her entire village. The only difference here is that Merica was still a child, and childhood trauma is something different and deep. Quote, for childhood trauma is the bedrock of what exists within the shadow of the psyche. The game doesn't give us much, but one thing it made explicitly clear to us is that the shaman village is Merica's home, where she grew up and first stepped foot, where she was just a child at the time. I don't think it's a coincidence that it is here, in the shadow, that we discover the horrors of America's past. That's quite literally what the shadow is for. What occurs in her inner world of a child who experiences trauma is far more violent than if that trauma strikes an adult. The amount of fractures it causes are more numerous than the allegations on Mr. Beast. Quote, when traumatic experience strikes the psyche, the ego must split into fragments or dissociate. This allows life to go on by dividing up unbearable experiences into different compartments of the mind and body. The most precious of these fragments is the inner child. This part of the personality is represented as a child or infant, often locked away in an inner cocoon, imprisoning sanctuary, or psychic retreat. I'm not going to talk about all the different dissociations that occur, as I just did that in my most recent video here, but one thing that did stick out to me was what psychoanalysts refer to as the progressed and regressed personalities, along with the concept of an inner attacker or attacking complex. The progressed and regressed parts of this inner world is referred to as the self-care system that is created in the inner world of patients like Merica who experience childhood trauma. Quote, the regressed part of the personality is usually represented as a vulnerable, young, innocent, often feminine child who remains hidden from the world. This inner child represents the true self or inner God of the person and must be protected from any further trauma at all costs. The progress part of the personality is represented by a quote unquote, powerful great being who protects its vulnerable partner, sometimes even imprisoning it. This personality appears as an angel or some other winged being. In short, the only reason for these personality splits and internal fragments is to protect this inner child and set up quote-unquote defensive operations to keep that little child safe and removed from any potential harm. The end goal for the patient of childhood trauma is to one day return to this version of themselves, this inner child, this true self and inner God. 
but that takes time, healing, and an incredible effort. I think it's abundantly clear and obvious who these regressed and progressed personalities are, Mikola and Melania. I mean, Mikola is literally an eternal child, sealed behind secret lifts, puzzles, and trapped in an Everjail. And the cherry on top is the fact that he is literally resting in a cocoon. I mean, when I read that in this book, it blew my mind. Melania is then obviously this powerful, angelic, winged figure who protects Mikola with her very life. Recall earlier that this inner child would be imprisoned and hidden from the world, not in a malicious way, but rather a protective way. However, this personality needs to resurface at some point for healing and integration to take place. I think Mikola might have charmed Moog for this very reason, to free himself from this prison he found himself in. I think Melania is there keeping watch over him, not letting him leave or progress out of the fear for his life. Anyways, that deserves its very own video, along with why Mikola needed both Moog and Radon, so stay tuned for those upcoming videos. The other piece of the personality that is created within trauma survivors is the attacking complex, or inner attacker. This inner attacker will take on the form of the original perpetrator of the act, and will essentially take on the role of the evil angel, a winged and demonic creature who wants the inner child for themselves. Blake's good and evil angels struggling over possession of this child is a perfect illustration of this inner conflict. The good angel obviously being Melania, and the evil being Moog. As the Commodore Mushroom on my previous video pointed out, this also explains why Melania and Moog are the only winged demigods, and both have interest in Mikola. Moog takes on this evil, demonic, horned appearance because he represents the inner attacker part of the personality. It was the horn scent who originally committed the act on America's people. So him taking on this appearance and also taking Mikola is a perfect fit for this concept. Quote, Never again, says the patient, will the traumatized personal spirit of this child suffer this badly. Never again will it be helpless in the face of cruel reality. Before this happens, I will disperse it into fragments. In this way, I will preserve what is left of this prematurely amputated child, of an innocence that has suffered too much too soon. One of the first things we were shown all the way back in the E3 trailer was America shattering the Elden Ring. For something so incredibly important and shown to us years ago, we are given very little reason behind it. Now, some think it's due because of the death of Godwin, but it also seems like Merica might have had a hand in that fateful night. Perhaps it's because of the fact that she wants out of this godhood and smashing the Elden Ring is her way of doing so, but there's little evidence of that. But we do find a single line from an unlikely source that hints at the reason behind it. Hairly tree, but before he could finish, someone cut the tree open and absconded with his infant form. Indeed, it seems those words held weight. How vexing that the all-knowing didn't have the full story. Perhaps the Queen's sorrow was justified. Ah, my apologies. Lost myself for a moment there. Perhaps the Queen's sorrow was justified. That right there, that single line of dialogue, tells the whole story of why America shattered the Elden Ring. Her sorrow only comes with the information that Mikola has been taken. After that, she beckons her other half, her physical body, Radigan, to the capital as she needs his body to physically shatter the Elden Ring. All a last-ditch attempt to protect Mikola. Because, well, that's why they are all there. To protect this wounded inner child from any further harm. The only reason behind these fragmentations is to serve as lines of defense between the inner child and further trauma. And when that child is in jeopardy, all hell breaks loose. But Mikola knows something that none of them do. Because he is this true self, the inner god, the inner child, he knows the only path forward is through his return. He must confront the trauma in the shadow that once wounded America so. He must heal and unite the opposites that are warring within. He must heal this conflicted heart. Quote, this is probably one of Nietzsche's most important realizations as the one thing that holds everyone back from becoming who we truly are is the integration of our inner child and facing childhood trauma. For childhood trauma is the bedrock of what exists within the shadow of the psyche. Once this is confronted and integrated over time, 
the final metamorphosis of the child starts to begin, and life truly starts to become complete and embraced with joy and compassion. To reiterate, Elden Ring is a human story about what happens when someone is faced with trauma and the different internal splits that arise from it. The most precious of these fragments is the inner child that must be kept safe at all costs. If and when this inner child is in harm's way, the self fractures as a Hail Mary to protect this child. This is what we see when Merica fractures the Elden Ring. Different versions of herself split. But this child needs to one day come back to the shadow, to where it all began, and return to godhood. This is why we learn of Merica's horrific past in the Shadowlands. This is why Mikola needs to get there. This is why the Secret Rite Scroll mentions the return of a god. This is why Melania is so powerful and protects Mikola. She is the last line of defense. This is why Moog is horned and winged, and why Mikola charms him into taking him. Everything is simply a human story of Merica and what she is going through. The rest is just set dressing. Thank you all so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If you are at all interested in a deeper dive into these fractures and the effects that trauma had on America, check out this video here. As always, I will see you in the next one. Much love.